Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Jakari Jackson. It is January 15th, 2016, and here's a look at our top stories. Tonight on the InfoWars Nightly News. A growing number of police chiefs and sheriffs join a call to arms. Albany's mandatory gun storage law takes effect. Planned Parenthood sues activists who made secret videotapes. Upstate New York police sees 8.5 million in assets a year without having to prove a crime. The state confiscates veterans' kids over medical marijuana PTSD treatments. Then Leanne investigates the new spy technology students will be forced to pay for out of their own pockets. And Jakari Jackson sits down with the creator of an exciting new role-playing video game. Over a billion people know my story. It's been told for thousands of years. All that and more on the InfoWars Nightly News. Clean, pure drinking water. You can't survive without it. But where do you get it? Alexa Pure Pro is a brand new groundbreaking gravity-fed water filtration system that is like no other. The Alexa Pure Pro transforms water from virtually any fresh source into clean, healthy drinking water, pairing the unprecedented super filtration power of an all-new gravity block core with a hybrid chromatic shell. It removes up to 99.999% of impurities, including bacteria, viruses, fluoride, disinfectants, volatile organic contaminants, and hormones. Filter capacity up to 5,000 gallons, stainless steel construction, easy assembly, low maintenance, replacement filters are simple to install. And now, as part of an exclusive limited time introductory offer, you can save $20 off the retail price and get free shipping. This is a limited time offer, so order your unit today and receive free shipping and $20 off. Go to InfoWarsStore.com or call 888-253-3139. We see an ever-growing number of politicians and talking heads talking about how we need more gun restrictions, how we need to have magazine limits and say that you can't have a semi-automatic rifle and all this and the other. But we also see a growing number of people in law enforcement who have the common sense to understand that they cannot be there to protect you all the time. And now we see that police chiefs and sheriffs are joining the call to arms. It says, of the growing number of rural and big city law enforcement officials, who openly encourages responsible gun ownership. Sheriff Judd, he's down in Florida, believes guns allow citizens to defend themselves when police cannot. A California police chief is backing teachers in his district to pack heat. A Detroit police chief has been a leader in the community urging citizens to arm themselves. And a Maryland sheriff is working with the state's General Assembly to try to make it easier to obtain a uh, handgun permit. So this is also in addition to sheriffs like Nick Finch, in Florida, also uh, David Clark in Milwaukee, many, many others, more than I have time to name. But these guys understand that they can't be there to protect you all, all the time. So uh, take the time to educate yourself on the firearm, whether that's a concealed carry class, uh, you know, some type of, you know, shooting engagement, hunting club, whatever, where you can come become more proficient with the firearm. Like I tell anybody, you know, I do support people's Second Amendment rights, but you should also learn how to use the firearm properly. That's not necessarily taking a class, but go out and shoot with people who are more experienced than you. So if the time does come, you will have the ability to protect yourself. Because what I tell people, you know, a bad guy is looking for a target of opportunity. A lot of times just pulling out your gun will scare off most people who are just looking for a target of opportunity. Or if nothing else, once you pull that trigger the first time, even if they run away shooting from you, they're probably going to run away. So they're counting on you to be unarmed and that's how they prey on people. But if you can defend yourself, that changes the issue a whole lot. Now, with more on this, we see the state of New York, which is not surprising to hear this type of thing, but Albany has a mandatory gun storage law that has taken effect. And the city of Albany has joined Rochester, Buffalo, and New York City as a, as a whole in adopting the uh, safe storage requirements, which says basically if your gun is not in immediate use, like if you're not carrying it on your person or whatever, uh, you have to have your gun either locked away or have some type of locking mechanism on it. Now. As with a lot of things, I think a lot of people in the gun control lobby do have good intentions at the grassroots level. Of course, we see major hypocrites like Mayor Bloomberg and Eric Holder and other people of that caliber who have armed bodyguards. They go to these big events to have or these big uh, buildings that have uh, armed security everywhere 
Uh, maybe sometimes you can have guys follow them around in the building, but they don't want you to be armed. And it's completely ridiculous, but to say somebody can't have immediate access to a firearm in their home is a big no-no for me, because here in the South, Southwest where we are, uh, you go to somebody's house. You know, it's not as common as it used to be, but you can see a gun rack on the wall. And that's their business. If you choose to buy a gun safe, that's your business. You choose to have a biometric or some other locking mechanism on your firearm, that's your business. But I think it's ultimately up to the gun owner, not the government, to decide how these weapons are stored inside the home. Once again, if you do have children, I definitely encourage you to expose them to the gun. You don't necessarily have to let them shoot it, but say, hey, this isn't like a cartoon. There are real consequences if you pull this trigger and you uh, aim it at somebody that, that you really don't want to hurt. So you have to definitely be aware of this because they'll show you the kids, like the little girl who shot the Uzi and they killed the gun instructor and as horrible and bad as that was, they don't want to tell you about the 15-year-old kid who shot the AR-15 in Houston and uh, got the bad guys, the 12-year-old Oklahoma girl who shot the guy who broke into her home when she was home alone. They don't want to tell you anything about that. And since we're talking about the kids and everything for the kids, and uh, I saw this really funny meme the other day. It was on the site where it says Obama, it had a picture of Obama. He's like, if we can do one thing to help one child, we need to you know, take away all these guns. And they have a picture of him with Planned Parenthood. And it's like, never mind. <laughs> you know, because they'll support Planned Parenthood all day long, chopping up babies in the womb. But, you know, uh, if a child is even around a gun, they want to throw the book at the person who owns the firearm. Now we see Planned Parenthood suing the undercover abortion over the undercover abortion videos. It says Planned Parenthood on Thursday filed a long-awaited federal lawsuit against the anti-abortion activists who targeted the group with undercover videos last year. The national organization, along with its California affiliate, is accusing the Center for Medical Progress of unlawful behavior ranging from secret videotaping to trespassing. Now, I do understand there are various, um, I guess you would call them somewhat wiretapping laws. I'm not exactly sure where California falls into that. But we see another issue here of kill the messenger. We saw it with uh, Julian Assange, Gary Webb, uh, Snowden, Bradley Manning, and they always want to come after the guy who's blowing the whistle on the activities and completely disregard uh, the activities of the people who are actually perpetrating the things. Like uh, we see the people in the Planned Parenthood videos laughing about how they want to buy Lamborghinis. Uh, we've seen the other people, uh, I believe it's the people who worked for Dr. Kermit, say like, yeah, he took joy in chopping up the fetuses while they were still alive and moving. And the one uh, video, the undercover video, I guess it wasn't undercover, they interviewed the lady, the lady uh, outright. And she was saying that um, she saw the fetus recoil when they stuck uh, the uh, forceps in there after it. So. Uh, it's, it's a very sad deal where you would persecute a person who is just trying to get the truth out there as to what's going on with this taxpayer funded uh, industry, uh, this taxpayer funded organization. So people can understand exactly, do they really want their tax money to go to an organization like this? And they always say that, oh, it's only, uh, you know, 3% of our, of our, uh, of our finances go to abortions or whatever else. Oh, well, as uh, one of the pastors we talked to here on this show, uh, Dr. Childress, Pastor Childress, he said he'd like to check those books. Says, Number one, he's not convinced it's only 3%. And even if it is, when you see these people who uh, protest outside of Planned Parenthood clinics like they do here in Austin, Texas, those people aren't out there for any other reason than abortion. If you got rid of that 3%, that itty bitty 3% that you always want to quote, 97% of your problems would go away. But they don't want to do that. They want to continue to say it's for women's rights and they're helping minorities and all this and that, even though they put them in the uh, minority communities. Margaret Sanger, the founder of Planned Parenthood, saying that she was doing it to uh, exterminate the black weeds. You know, she hung out with the Klan and did all those um, silly things. Now let's switch gears a little bit now and talk about, or go back to the state of New York. We were talking about them a little bit earlier. You guys may have heard of the asset forfeiture seizure clause, which allows police to pretty much take your property without even charging you for a crime. Uh, they can just say, hey, uh, you got $10,000 in your car, Bob, you must be a, a drug dealer. And Bob's like, no, I have uh, $10,000. I'm gonna go you know, buy a car for my you know, 16 year old son or whatever. They don't wanna hear that. And now we see in upstate New York, they have seized 8.5 million in assets uh, a year without having to prove a crime. And this centers around Justin Lucas. Uh, he gathered up $50,000 in cash in 2011 to bail out his brother for a drug charge. But when he took the money to the county jail in a brown paper bag, the sheriff's deputy seized the cash without releasing his brother. They told him that the money was subject of a drug investigation. Lucas's brother eventually pleaded guilty to a felony marijuana possession charge. 
But even when the case was over, the brother could not get his money back. And it says the sheriff's office had already used a federal law to force him to forfeit the money to the government. Now, you could say that, well, his brother's a drug dealer, so he must have had $50,000 in cash. That's a very strong assumption. Uh, like I said, they could not prove that the guy had gotten the cash through ill-gotten means. And that's just one of many examples of people who have suffered this. But, you know, like a lot of things, people don't care until it actually happens to them personally. And as we're talking about drugs, let's talk about somebody who is using drugs, and I guess in a very legal and lawful way. It says, a state confiscates veterans' kids over medical marijuana PTSD treatment. Now, because as everybody knows, uh, the marijuana is now legal in Colorado, and we see a Gulf War veteran who moved to Colorado last year with his children, uh, had his children confiscated by the state of Kansas over his use of medical marijuana to treat his PTSD symptoms. The article goes on to state how he was taking prescription pills from the VA that really wasn't helping, was somewhat making his situation worse. And you see those commercials all the time, you know, these antidepressants, these whatever else type of drugs. Uh, stop taking this product immediately if you have thoughts of violent behavior or a wish for suicide. They say that right in the commercial. I know they say it at the end, real low, real small text on the screen, but they have to warn you <laughs> over that um, straight up. And this is uh, Mr. Schwab. Uh, he was moving to... Uh, to Colorado with his family. And it says, I guess his wife made the mistake of telling her parents that they were moving with the kids to Colorado. And she said, yeah, we're gonna go out there and try to uh, treat uh, the gentleman's PTSD with marijuana. The parents didn't like that. They called them unfit parents and uh, called the state on them. In the state sees the children very unfortunately. Hopefully they'll get the kids back, but it reminds me, reminds me of that film, American Drug War. I believe it's two. They talk about marijuana and the kid was undergoing a, uh, Cannabis oil treatment, is that the proper terminology? I'm not real versed in the marijuana lore. A cannabinoid oil, thank you, the guys are telling me in my head. And the kid was undergoing, he was doing great under the treatment, but once his parents ran out of money and he couldn't continue the treatment, the kid died very unfortunately. But more and more governors are waking up to this and more and more law enforcement and other people are saying, hey, we're not gonna lock people up for trying to treat their kids using uh, marijuana. Now, Chipotle, has closed their stores or will be closing their stores temporarily to try to figure out why they have a big outbreak of E. coli and salmonella. I'm not exactly sure what the cause of this is, but uh, they are a very large uh, food retailer, so we'll see how that thing develops. And also the world's largest retailer, maybe they're the second largest retailer, I think Amazon has taken them over, but Walmart is uh, shuttering 269 stores, 154 of them in the United States of America. And it says the stores account for a very small fraction, considerably, of Walmart's revenue. And it says Walmart, Walmart Stores, Inc. said the store closures will affect uh, 16,000 workers. So this will affect the economy. Regardless of what you think about Walmart, they do employ a whole lot of people. So that's a whole lot of people that will be without a job. And with more on this, on the global economy, on the national economy, we have the special report from John Bound. <laughs> The Titanic, we all know as the global economy, appears to be moving along at full speed. But signs of sea ice are dead ahead. The first alarm bells have been sounded from several economists that know to look for the most subtle signs of danger of a global economic collapse. We have a bubble around the world in demographic spending, which keeps declining in more countries. And we can predict this by country. Japan was the first to peak, and then the US and now Europe. But we also have the greatest debt bubble in modern history, two to four times what we've seen back in the roaring 20s, last time we had a debt bubble. And all we need, like in 2008 with the subprime crisis, is a trigger to cause this debt bubble to reset and, and deleverage, or, or what I call a financial detox. And when you go south of the border, even below Mexico way, it's currency crisis after currency crisis, commodity crash after commodity crash. Current events form future trends. What happened yesterday over in Brazil? Well, they had a wonderful time. About a half a million people turned out to protest against the government. How come? Well, they're in a recession. Inflation is sky